大家好，我是 g o d r e 我现在在 Boston。那昨天我和龙沙老板，我们一起钓了一个五百斤的 Bluefin Tuna， 真的好厉害。那今天我去他的工厂，为什么我要聊这两个问题？第一，我们可以买这条鱼多少钱？第二，疫情爆发以后，他的生意有什么影响？他们在这里切发一块肉拿出来，然后他们可以看看这这条鱼大概值多少钱。So this is the fish we caught yesterday, right? We landed five fish. Our company. This is our fish right here, the one we caught on the boat. You see, these are more fatty. This is, doesn't really have fat. Our fish is not sold yet, but we expect we can get nine dollars a pound for that fish. Nine times five sixty. No, the dress weight. So that'd be about four thousand dollars. About four thousand dollars. You don't like that one? No. <laughs> so he picked at the five forty-three. Which one did you take, sir? He did not select our fish. He chose that 543-pound fish over there. And how much did that go for? I think $12 a pound. So we just sold this one. The first buyer who came in selected this one. We sold that for $12 a pound. You see that? That's really fatty. This is a very nice fish. This one's going to be the best. This one's really nice fish. Yeah, it's a really, really nice fatty. 这个鱼的单价比我们贵，因为它的肥肉比较多。It's like it's really the the fat content. It's like really important. The fat and the color are the most important. Right? Okay. We just sold it to a local sushi distributor. It's not a restaurant. So that distributor has to take it in, inventory it, fillet it, break it down, and then deliver it to all the sushi restaurants. Now we're going to look at the tuna fish. How much can we buy? What kind of fish is that? That's a blue fish too. Oh, that's tuna. So this would be a piece of loin meat. Oh, that's loin. Okay. So how much do these guys cost? Sixty dollars a pound. Sixty dollars a pound. This is more of. It's all right. This yeah. is pretty good. They get a lot fattier. Okay. Okay. And how much does this go for? I'll typically sell toro anywhere from twenty-eight to thirty-four dollars a pound. A lot of guys can touch it and feel your finger. That that's just fat. That's just oil. That's just yeah. Touch that. Feel okay. That. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very oily. Like, what do they do with the ribs? We can scrape the ribs and we get all these small what we call tuna scrapes. Yeah. Okay. In a sushi restaurant, that'll be used for your spicy tuna rolls. So if you need a, just yeah. a little oily, but yeah. no, no flavor. Right. That's like the cheapest stuff. The cheapest stuff, but actually in America, that's what we like the most. They like to chop, chop it up a little bit of mayo, some some spicy sauce in there. That's the tartar that makes the spicy tuna rolls. Very popular. So Americans like the cheap part. So ribbon, then, you want to have a bit of gray, then, like a tall one. Then, so Americans like to have this plain one, ribbed one. Yesterday, I met a local fish shop owner. He gave me this American fish shop fish, so it's higher than the Canada fish, so there aren't many fish coming from China. But this year, when it's cold, maybe the fish from Canada isn't enough, so they get a lot of Chinese fish. But it's very quickly spread, so I'm really curious how the business is going. Right planning to sell coffee like in the US, like as soon as COVID hit. Right planning to sell coffee like in the US, like as soon as COVID hit. Right planning to sell coffee like in the US, like as soon as COVID hit. We even brought the beans in here, and bam! Like all the cafes that we we arrange it, they're all gone, and we have to wait till next year. How your business changed after COVID? We were feeling the effects of COVID months before it became national news. The industry as a whole ships a lot of really high-end seafood to China for Chinese New Year in China. That took a huge hit. Like people were all prepped, had all these live lobsters staged to ship to China. And they canceled all the flights, canceled all the orders. The price plummeted. How do they do the lobsters? They sell it here. Take the meat out. Oh, okay. Kill them, cook them, take the meat out, and sell them, freeze the meat. Sunday night, the governor of Massachusetts closed all restaurants, and by midday Tuesday, it was like everything was crashing. You know, we were down. You know, it was very clear we were going to be down 80, 90 percent. 80, 90 percent. Percent down. We sell to a lot of universities. Yeah.、Uh, so we sell to Harvard University.、Oh, I spent 15 years building this company. You've been around our company and our organization. You can see it's a lot of really hardworking, really prideful people. You know, I have 100 employees who rely on me. Thousand fishermen who rely on us to take their fish to support their livelihoods. Right. So in a global pandemic, when people are locked in their houses and scared. They need food, and they need healthy food. In the United States, like seventy or eighty percent of seafood is consumed at restaurants and not at home. So Americans just don't know how to cook fish.、Uh, yeah, apparently there are no more restaurants. Restaurants were just out zero, right? Like wholesalers closed,、yeah. completely closed down. Not 
Not 10%, not 20%, 0%. We here, we start, we developed retail packs. So we, we started packaging the fish and we started selling it e-commerce. So for example, like in China, when I ship, it costs me like, what, a dollar? Tell us what it costs here and what, what issues do you run into like with shipping? It's expensive and the packaging is expensive. Yeah. Um, and they're not very reliable. It's not easy, right? So the United States, it's not as easy to move stuff to the end users. I think there's innovations being made in that space. So for us, get 10 pounds, load up your freezer, eat it three, four times a week, and then three weeks later, get another 10 pound bundle. So it's not Most efficient. people can fit 10 pounds of fish in their freezer. So it's not efficient for them to order one pound of frozen fish? No, no. Now, tuna is tuna is but it's飞不飞越飞越贵最后我们就买世界美元我觉得太少了疫情对美国还鲜艳影响真的很大他们以前批发给餐厅学校还有出口但是现在他们要想办法在网上买给普通人在美国最大的问题就是快递真的很贵比如